We, one of the things that came up over the course of the week was um, how teams recover from the 9-0 drubbing that Southampton had at the weekend. Um, what's your worst experience of drubbing? Um, well, I was, I was on the bench for the game against Germany when we got hammered, um, but I didn't play. I, uh, for games I've played in, I think I've lost a couple, maybe tr four or five, and it's just your... Never nine. No, never nine. No, well, obviously, in the history books, I couldn't be nine, <laughs> unless I played one of those games, but no, never nine, and it's... I think what in the game, and if it starts off badly and you're playing against a very good side and you just think, oh God, we're here, we're in for a tough day. The mindset from everybody is if you concede a couple of goals early, right, right, that's it, lock up shop, close down, get together, stop them scoring more goals, don't let this get embarrassing. And that, that as well as a defender, and you, that's, that's what's said between you on the pitch. On the pitch, you're saying to her, like you're just, no more goals, no more goals, no more goals. Fortunately, a couple more might go in, but you're, that's, your, that's your mindset. 9 0 is like, uh, Southampton there were devoid of any sort of shape, any form. They're lackluster defending. They're like the, the, all the goals could have possibly. Like, there's a, don't get me wrong. There's a few very good goals. Madison's free kick, some great exceptional pieces. But when you look at it and break it down, crossing into the box, men not being marked, little chip, third man runs into the box, men not being marked, like. The, we talk about communication being absolutely vital in, in football. There was no communication between the teams. People were running off the backs of their players and they were just turning around and throwing their hands up in the air as if, like, oh, you're supposed to be marking him. Well, if he's supposed to be marking him, tell him. It, it was shameful that they didn't get it together at some point to look like they could stop him because Leicester could have won that game 12 13 nil. Being on the bench for the 6 one dropping, like we were talking about the guys that came on at, at, uh, at half time and the kind of wreckage that then ensued in the 5 1 uh, yeah. against Denmark. Kind of sitting there watching it all unfold in front of you, what, what, what is that emotion like? Because to some people, it'd be like, well, at least I'm not out there. But I presume to a professional footballer, no. that's not exactly the attitude you'd no. have. No, you want to you play every game. And even if the team have been beating, you kind of feel like, I can do something more to stop that happening. And that's just your mindset because you, you want to be on the pitch at all times. But the six, this, the Ireland game against Germany, the, it was a combination of two things. It was the world champ, they went on to be the world champions. So at the time, they were probably the best. Germany had been for a long, long time, and what sticks in my mind, and I've all to this day, I feel like it was such a shame he didn't get to play in the World Cup. Was Marco Rice? He was exceptional. I mean, what I've seen a lot of live football, obviously, and he was that was one of the best performances I've seen live from any player. It was just breathtaking to watch, and I thought, wow, that's going for football. Tony Cruz was unbelievable. Lamb was I've never seen a player he didn't give the ball away. So. They beat us, they were comfortable, and they went on to win it. We then, I played in the, the next game in um, Germany where they beat us 3 0, or 3 or 4 0, I think it was. And it was, we were better organised, we were, had a, more of a shape about us. You know, we, we, did, we knew what we were going into to, in some extent, so we, we, we counter attacked them a bit better and we, we set up an information that we didn't let them just run all over us. Um, but that game afterwards, there was you know, a lot to be said and we were going into the fair oil and so you knew straight away there was a game that we could turn around in the sense that we were going to get a win in the back, but I think that's been, that was the end of it for Trapatoni. Yeah, it, it definitely felt, uh, and I'm sure you felt it as well, many times during Trapatoni's era, he was fairly patronising towards the, the players in oh, terms yeah. of the qualities of the players. Like, I don't want to say a 6-1 defeat ever vindicates yeah. a manager, but no. like, I wondered if it ever kind of said to him, well, I told you guys so, or whatever, when it, when it came to the media, that like, ultimately <coughs> it was a, a blame to be had there in, in terms of how uh, Ireland set up, in terms of how uh, he kind of approached that himself. That's, if, if the belief wasn't there from the, the, from the dugout, then, yeah. then where can it actually come from? I think the thing is, though, with Trapattoni, like, like I said, I played, I played quite a lot under him, and... You know, we got to the European Championships. I didn't play in the European Championships, was a, which was a sticking point for me. I should have. At some point, I'd been playing with my club, and it was fr extremely frustrating. The most frustrating I've ever been in my career would, would be not getting time to play in that tournament. But then on the back of that, then the f we lost 6-1 to Germany. So I'd gone from the tournament and not playing and us being pretty poor over there and not getting a win and losing every game, not playing a minute and playing nine games in the qualifiers to get us there, but then not getting a minute over there, which is frustrating. And then on the back of that, to come into the next campaign and play against... Germany and get hammered so then and I was on the bench again so I was like oh so what what do I have to do you know in the last four games you've conceded how many goals and I'm a player that's played in the Russia game that helped us get us there played in the 4-0 win over in Estonia that helped us get us there so you're kind of like feeling it it can be a frustrating time and it can spill over but and as from the manager's point of view yet there was a sense of you know he set up as a way because he'd been he'd played 
he'd had great teams. He'd had unbelievable teams, like the likes of Bayern Munich and Juventus and wherever. So there was a sense that he didn't feel that we were as good as those teams. So he set up in a way that we could be effective. But if you looked at that squad now, to the current squad, how would you judge us? <laughs> you know, you're talking about players, Robbie Keane, Damien Duff. John O'Shea. Yeah, John O'Shea, Richard Dunn, Shea Given, you know, myself, Keith Andrews. Everybody was playing in the Premiership constantly for their teams. So that's... How did you get out of the team? What happened? I just... I was the Euros, like... I, was, I just, basically, when I played in the games, the games I played in, there was probably an injury or a suspension for someone, so I came in and played and did well, but then the manager would just revert back to his turn. Always left. right back. Both left back, right and left oh, back. left back and right back, yeah, left back and right back. So yeah, I played, yeah, pretty much. I'd say, I'd say I probably played just as much left back as I did right back in that the qualifications. And so in the tournament, the full backs are Ward and O'Shea. O'Shea, yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah, they you know. But O'Shea should have been playing centre back at that yeah, stage. Yeah, should have been, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. know. Oh, I should, I, I 100 percent should have played right back in the tournament. I, I feel I'd gone on the, I played 30 something games for Fulham that season, maybe 40 in cup, in cup competitions. Had a really good campaign, you know, the year before. Had done well, and you know, I'd been playing consistently in the Premiership. So it was for me not to have played was was extremely frustrating, and I felt I definitely deserved a place in the team. But sure, that's what happened. And you know, for the last game, where we'd obviously out of the tournament, and there was a chance to change it, and he stuck with the same players again instead of giving the players that had, had you know, even if he didn't want to make whole same changes mm -hmm. and change the whole team, you know, he should have at some point thought, you know, what? There's a lot of players that have been involved that have had more contribution to us getting here than what I've given them. So we should have given them an opportunity. Against that was the Italian game. Italian game, yeah. And it's not like... Um, no, it didn't go down well on any. It didn't make any difference. No, made no difference whatsoever. Yeah. Was that a, 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 a annoyed camp very early on? Um, yeah, I think... So I think you've, you've spoke to Keith about it before, haven't you? About the, how long we were in camp for and... It was just double sessions, and don't get me wrong, it's great being around the Irish lads, and you're going into a major tournament, there's a huge buzz about it, but there was a, a sense of it was it was too much time before we went to, before we went to the tournament. It would have been better broken up, I think, instead of being very full on. And we had there was a training camp in Italy. There was a training camp in Ireland, then in Italy, yeah. and then a week or so before the tournament, we went to the tournament as well, so it was, um, it was, it was a, long, a long time to get her, and I suppose cabin fever was setting in, and you just, you were, you were losing, not, not losing the excitement when we got to Poland, you know, it, it, all of that kind of changed, but you felt that it, w it was almost too intense before we got there. But the team never changed, really. No. Like everybody knew exactly what the first team was going to be, so there was no opportunity. No. Even if you played well in training, yeah. it didn't make any difference. Well, like I said, even if you played well in the game, so, you know, considering, I think there was nine, nine games I think I played in for the qualifiers to get there, which is most of them, basically. And is there a conversation that happens with, with Trapp or with Tardelli or anybody saying, listen, this is the direct direction we're going, Stephen? Well, considering they don't speak English, no, there's not much of a conversation at all. <laughs> 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 so, no. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, I think... Is Brady around the camp at that stage or is he gone? Had, had he, no, is he still there? Liam was, I think Liam was still there. I think Liam was still there, but, but yeah, no. Uh, I'd, listen, it was so widely publicised what, no, what happened, what people thought happened afterwards and it was like frustration spilled over, but, you know, there's a sense of just the w the way they would no it wasn't even the manager Trapattoni was different he he I think he understood slightly more and he was a bit more delicate in the way he put things even though he's quite stern and robust at times he was still a a bit more approachable even though was, again his English was was very poor and he, you know you couldn't really have a, a conversation with him and tell him exactly how you're feeling um, but it was Sardelli who was a little bit more kind of dismissive about things and that that's kind of... Why, why was that? Or like, was that just the way he was? was? Was he always like that or did that change? Uh, no, maybe because he was a walk-up and he felt he, he could be dismissive, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. yeah, which is like an unusual situation. We obviously thought at the time that mm. this is a great big name to bring mm. in, but actually because of their kind of success, the playing success, mm. like the, was it a situation where they looked down on players or is, is that putting it a bit too, too harshly? Um, not Trapattoni. I, I don't think he he didn't. He he was again. I think he was respectful, and he just felt this was the, his best way of getting a performance over. So he wasn't. He, he didn't look down. Tardelli, on the other hand, <laughs> afraid of what I want to say here. Um, uh, yeah, I think to an extent, he, he was a little bit kind of. If you if you you know, none of us were at the level that he like. No one, none of us are ever won a World Cup. So you know, for him, we probably felt that he, we were below what he he'd said standard for himself. Mm. 
which isn't the way a coach should be yeah. or any back so team. I missed it. So, uh, what happened? <laughs> uh, so, after the game, um, I think I, I went to speak to them just to ask them about, you know, am I going to play now? We've lost type thing. And then... After the, this is the second game? Yeah, the second game. We were about to travel to the Faroe Islands and I just kind of said, listen, making a case for myself, I feel like I deserve an opportunity. Sorry, is this after the Germany game? After the Germany game. Okay, right. So you've sat through the Euro, said nothing. Yep. Sat through the six one, said nothing. Yes. Finally, you're like, I'm going to. I'm playing something. the Faroe Islands, so it's not like a risk put me in against them. You know, yeah. it, um, played a couple of hundred Premiership games and playing against the Faroe Islands. I think I could handle myself. So <laughs> I think I went to speak to them and say, listen, blah blah. blah I feel like I should play. You know, I think you all probably know me around here. I'm not exactly the argumentative type of person. I, I, you know, I can stay my, I can stand my ground and, and more than capable of looking after myself, but. I would, I'd always do things respectfully and manfully. So you weren't shouting the odds? No. And and then it was just the way Tardelli was, and that was it. It was just, he was very dismissive and just, yeah, it was a frustrating time. Like I said, I, So there's I, no actual conversation. You go in and say, here, there's no conversation. Play, and he's like... Yeah, basically. Just kind of waving you away. Mm, pretty much, yeah. Not a... No. Not a great moment, I would say. No, no, not at all, no. And like I said, extremely frustrating and just, you know, when you're in, the, in that position as a player and someone that's been... I, I think... That was frustrating, but then what happened afterwards, I think when they questioned my commitment to Ireland and stuff and all and different things like that, and I'm going, are you kidding me? I've literally like, played for Ireland since I was 16 years of age. I'd gone some like four years and not missed a qualifier, even though I'd probably only played in, like five of them. You know, so, you know, for people to question your commitment to your country when all you've ever been is committed to Ireland and playing for Ireland, and it's probably been the pinnacle and the best moments of my career of being playing for Ireland, um, in the sense of that's what I would, like I said, I support teams when I was a kid growing up, but I support Ireland more than I support any of those teams. Mm. So it was never me, like, if I'd have put on a Liverpool jersey when I was a kid growing up, it would have been great, but, you know, it wouldn't have been like Steven Gerrard playing for Liverpool. It, it was me playing for Ireland was that. Yeah. So did, did he say anything? Did he actually speak? Or was it just gesticulation? Not really. It was more just like, yeah, I oh, will. I think it was like, Trapattoni was trying to engage a little bit, but then it was Tardelli was just dismissive and, yeah, just kind of said, waved it away and was like, mm, basically, he wasn't interested. So, yeah. What's the timeline then of him coming out saying that stuff about you? Is that, that was after the farewell, and so then... So there's still a possibility that you work together, but he's yeah, questioning... Yeah, no, I still work together, and then I like, got called up to a squad, and then I think he left me out of the squad. Um, and I was at Reading at the time, we were in the Premiership, still in the Premiership, and I think I was left out of a squad, and then he came out. They, I think when I was left out of the squad, I think the press asked him why I was left out, and I think he quest they said, oh, it's commitment or something. All right. Yeah. And so when you're reading that, what are you thinking? Oh, I just I was fuming, like, absolutely fuming. Like, oh, like... Phew, beyond rage, it, I mean, like I said, for myself, my wife Helga, who we've been together since we were 17, and she's seen how much effort and time I've put into playing for Ireland and coming home for every game and being disappointed not to play or wherever it's been, but yeah, I'd always turn up, I'd always keep coming, and you know, and people might say, oh, you're playing for a country, should I? but you should, but it gets to a point if you're a professional footballer where you want to play, you want to play. Yeah. So, but if you're still willing to come, even though you're not guaranteed, that, that says a lot more than the play. Like, I think it's harder to come as a player that's not guaranteed to play than the player is to come to, that's going to play. How did you get back in then? Did Trap Tony bring you back I in? Yeah, picked back in, yeah. Well, right, yeah. okay. And was that okay? That was... I, just, I just got on with it. Less than, we wouldn't have had much conversation with him in the first place. Okay, so, so there was no could, kind of clear the air yeah, to Tardelli no, or anything? No, there was no, no, because like I said, you didn't really speak to them that often because they didn't speak that good English. So when you yeah. came in the squad, it was just basically the same. Right. And then they were gone then. And what about O'Neill? How did the, the O'Neill thing end? Just, I think I got injured. Basically, I got injured in. That was kind of it. Like, there was no... But... Like, <laughs> see, Ireland's a funny one for me because, like, I've spent my whole life wanting to play for Ireland and playing for Ireland and being in the, from 16 to 32. So when you do give that much time to, a, to your country and you... You've, you've literally a bleak way, and I would do anything to play for Ireland. I'd play, if Ireland called me now, if care, I'd play for Ireland now. I don't care. I'd rip, I mean, I wouldn't care. So, you know, and I never officially retired because I just thought one of those things that like, why would you ever say, close the door on something that you would still happily do or want to do? I yeah. don't think that's a, but that never made sense for me. So, uh, but yeah, when Ireland, when it came to the end, it was just basically, I got picked in a couple of squads. I was in, I got picked in the first few squads of O'Neill's reign and Keane and came in, played a few games, and then I got injured at my club, so missed a couple of, missed, I was called up, but missed it because I was injured, and then stopped getting called up, and that was it. Right. But that, that, that was it. Like, there was no communication, no, no talk, no phone call, no nothing from anybody involved in Ireland, and you're, you know, it's, I, I, like I said, I, I, don't, I don't hold grudges against it, but when you ask to talk about it, it makes you frustrated thinking that you're... That's pretty raw. Well, if, you, if you've committed that much time to a country and a club 
and you don't have a phone call to say thanks very much for your services or we appreciate everything you've done or you know whatever it was yeah look listen at any point we've gone a different direction Does yeah it but not from nobody involved like that's frustrating I can see how that might be a bit annoying, all right? Yeah, slightly. Yeah, all right. And with O'Neill, there's no specific individual grudge. It's more a no, system like he, doesn't he was, work. He was the manager at the time. You know I mean, he, he manager picks the team based on. Hey, listen, I've been around enough managers to know that sometimes a manager picks a player over you, and you get on with it. You try your best and you play to the level of your ability to force your way into the team or make it. But if a manager doesn't pick, it doesn't pick. What can you do? It's all opinions, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, no, it is. It's a game of opinions, mm -hmm. all right. Mm -hmm. uh, it's eight forty this morning. You're watching OTBM, the Sports Breakfast Show from Off the Ball. We're talking rugby with Gregor Paul next to get the uh, bloodletting from New Zealand going. Here's Ron Nagara from last night's Off the Ball, chatting about England.